Departure's looking good. We're coming up on our nominal. Here. Okay, off flight controller is going to go for landing. Retro. Go. I know. Go. Right. Go. Control. Go. go. Downtown. Go. GNC. Go. 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 Hey guys, Dave Anderson here. Today we're going to be talking about foam because this is one of the things that you as an overland expedition camper enthusiast, a builder, one that wants to do a DIY project, this is what you're going to be very, very concerned with. And that is what kind of foam. This is the insulating value. This is the basis of what you are starting with with your habitat. Are you going to freeze in the wintertime? Are you going to overheat in the summertime? The answer is, I hope not. Let's first start off with a discussion on what is R value? What does R value actually mean? How is it determined? Let's find out. The R value of insulation is a value that is used to measure how well a specific type of insulation can resist heat flow. The higher the R value, the more effective the material is at preventing heat transfer. R value is short for resistance value. Different insulating materials have their own unique R value per unit length. The thicker the material, the more it resists heat transfer, so values are listed per inch. And then multiplying the value by the thickness of the insulation gives the R value. Thermal conductivity is known as lambda. It is the measure of how easily heat flows through a specific type of material, independent of the thickness of the material in question. The lower the thermal conductivity of the material, the better the thermal performance. In other words, the slower the heat will move across the material. It is measured in watts per meter kelvin. The R value is a measure of resistance to heat flow through a given thickness of material. So the higher the R value, the more thermal resistance the material has, and therefore the better its insulating properties. Now you are beginning to know why thermodynamic engineers get paid the big bucks. Now let's see if I can simplify it for you. Basically, insulation is trapping air because it is a good insulator at R3.6 per inch. Google it. Thermal conductivity also plays a role with those materials as well as solids such as extrusions, protrusions, and laminates. Add all these factors up and you have your R value. When adding up all of these values of the materials of a globe trucker panel, the theoretical R value is 15.5. The Federal Trade Commission, with the participation and support of the insulation industry, created an objective method for reporting the performance of residential insulation materials. This method is called the R-Value Rule. It mandates specific ASTM methods for thermal testing. Specifically, ASTM C518, Standard Test Method for Steady State Thermal Transmission Properties. This test uses a heat flow meter apparatus. The heat flow meter consists of a cold plate and a hot plate, which incorporates heat flux transducers for measuring heat flow. The material to be measured is placed between two plates, which are controlled to different temperatures to create a heat flow from hot to cold plate, which is measured by the transducers. Tests are commonly performed with a mean temperature between 35 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, with the most common being 75 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature difference of 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees is commonly used. The end result is the thermal conductivity and thermal resistance value are determined. These values can be used to determine energy loss through material. All right, now that you're armed with some knowledge of how insulation works and how they get that R value, so let's get right into the pros and cons of polyisosanurate PIR insulation. Polyisosanurate foam is nothing more than a rigid polyurethane foam, and oftentimes they are spoken in the same sentence. PIR insulation builds upon the PUR insulation's many benefits. The difference being that polyisosanurate foam is the upgraded version of polyurethane foam. Only a small portion of the rigid polyurethane foam volume consists of solid material. At a density of 40 kilograms per meter cubed, usual in building applications, the solid plastic material makes up only 5% of the volume, and cell walls that can withstand mechanical loads due to its rigidity and anti-buckling properties. Polyisosanurate foam has excellent fire retardancy. PIR slows the spread of flames and reduces the smoke emitted from the fire when compared to PUR products. PIR insulation has such a high thermal performance, it requires only half the thickness of other mineral-based insulation products because of the blowing agent that is used in the foam-making process. 
Currently, pentane is used as the blowing agent for PIR insulation. It is considered desirable as a blowing agent because of the following characteristics. Lower zero ozone depletion potential. Non-toxic. Low thermal conductivity to produce expected R value. Economically feasible. Readily available. Meet fire test requirements. And to meet building code requirements. Several European polyurethane producers had successfully used hydrocarbons as a blowing agent, and the potential for their use in polyisosanurate insulation was explored. Once formulation work began, extensive physical property and fire testing was conducted. Continued assessment confirmed pentane was the most suitable candidate as a replacement for a hydrocarbon blowing agent. Let's talk about that blowing agent because there's something odd happening in this chart. It appears as though the colder it gets, the less effective PIR insulation becomes. Keep in mind that this chart shows typical lower or mid-grade PIR foam densities. Also keep in mind if you stray away from the ASTM C518 standards, all types of insulation will vary their R value over different temperatures. The PIR insulation used in globe trucker panels is rated at R7 to R7.4. It turns out that pentane has a phase change from gaseous to liquid at lower temperatures, which causes its thermal conductivity to increase, thus lowering the R value of the insulation. This chart shows all the phases of pentane using pressure in bars in the vertical part of this graph. One standard atmospheric pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury or 14.696 pounds per square inch, which is equivalent to 1.01325 bars of pressure. This graph considers the entire thickness of PIR insulation to be at a constant temperature to collect its data. For instance, if the temperature data point is 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the test panel must be cold soaked throughout the entire core of the panel. Unless you are using the panels in a refrigerated application, this makes sense. But for most people wanting to live comfortably in an overland expedition habitat application, temperatures on the inside of the habitat in winter conditions will be at least 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Only the portion of the outer PIR IR panel that is below 25 degrees Fahrenheit has a decreased R value. One way to help eliminate the outer portions of the PIR panel to succumb to temperatures below 25 degrees Fahrenheit is to insulate it from extreme cold. Globe Trekker engineered panels accomplish this with the use of thick layers of FRP and ASDEL. ASDEL being twice as strong as wood with half the weight and twice the R value. What's more, even with PIR insulation becoming less thermally resistant at freezing temperatures, it still remains a higher R value than XPS or EPS. XPS being highly regarded in the refrigerated truck market. XPS insulation at an R value of 5 will gain as much as 10% thermal resistance at 25 degrees Fahrenheit and below. This puts XPS at an R value of 5.5. While medium density PIR that has been cold soaked throughout the entire core of the panel drops to 5.5. Higher density PIR, like the insulation used in globe trucker panels, are at least one R value higher still. Meanwhile, in the real world, remember this fact. Only the portion of the outer PIR panel that is below 25 degrees Fahrenheit has a decreased R value. As it turns out, the higher density PIR insulation is dimensionally stable, having a near identical expansion rate as the aluminum extrusion thermal brake frame that it is attached to, as well as the laminates and sublaminates that seal the rigid PIR foam insulation. Indeed, a friend of mine told me that PIR insulation may give off cyanide gases when burned. In fact, burning any polyurethane foam, rubber sole athletic shoes, plastics, and other common materials, hydrogen gas is produced. Exposure to concentrations of 200 to 500 parts per million of air for 30 minutes is usually fatal. However, at sustained carbon monoxide concentrations above only 150 to 200 parts per million, disorientation, unconsciousness, and death are possible. The moral of the story is twofold. If there are any plastics on fire, you shouldn't go out of your way to inhale the smoke. And carbon monoxide is just as dangerous to be around, if not more so. And lastly, the better insulated that your panels are and the longer that they last, you will also save money because you can decrease the amount of BTUs that your heater is producing or the amount of BTUs that your air conditioner has to produce. You can decrease the size of your solar panels. You don't have to run so many batteries. Everything is a little bit more efficient, lighter weight, 
it is a win-win. Lower BTU heaters and air conditioning units are also lower in cost. Over time, this saves you lots and lots of green. This combination of composite materials yields superior strength, durability, thermal properties, and a longer lifespan than any other expedition panel on the market today. And once again, I'm going to leave all of the references that I use in this video in the description. So about the only thing that I did not cover was the gassing off of the blowing agents, but pretty much that happens across the board. These panels have blowing agents in them that when they're manufactured, the R value is pretty high, but they gas off over time. That doesn't really happen when you have the panels that are fully encased in some kind of a, a vapor barrier that the gases cannot escape by. But most of the time, the gases only come out of that very, very edge layer. It takes years and years and years of an exposed panel to be able to gas off inside the core. If you learned something on this, I would really appreciate it if you'd smash on that like button. Subscribe if you're new, that would be really, really cool. I spent a lot of time getting research done for this and I just want you to be the best informed consumer that you possibly can be. Stay tuned for more educational videos just like this one. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless. To take full advantage of our products, additional tutorials, our how-to assemble videos, and educational videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website at www.rvglobetrekker.com where you can order our products and our OEM distributor products straight from the website.